Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. You are here at the Jones Library Building Committee. It is the 22nd of September and this meeting is being recorded to the cloud. It will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel shortly. And at this time, I would like to introduce the chair of this event, Professor Austin Serrett. Thank you. Th thank you, Angie. I wish I'd dress for the occasion. Um, it's nice to see you all. We're going to just go and you'll signify your presence vocally, Sharon. Here. Thank you, George. Here. Sean. Here. Paul. Present. Alex. Yes. Christine. Yes. And Austin is here. We have a we have a quorum, and uh, uh, other members may join us. We are joined by our good colleagues from uh, from Colliers. The first order of business is the approval of minutes. Uh, from first from August 9th. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I will. Thank you. That was good. Is there a second? Second. That's Paul. Uh, any corrections, comments on the minutes? Okay, hearing none, Sharon? Yes. Uh, George? Yes. John? Yes. Paul? Yes. Alex? Yes. Christine? Yes. Austin votes yes. Thank you for that. Okay, minutes of August 23rd. Motion to approve. I will. Thank you. Second. 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 Okay. Any comments or corrections on the minutes? Uh, Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. John? Yes. Paul? Yes. Alex? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Austin votes yes. And lastly, uh, September 8th, the motion to approve. I will. Thank S you so much. Second. 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 Okay. Any corrections to the minutes? Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Sean? I'm going to abstain from those ones. Paul? Yes. Alex? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. And thank you to Angie uh, for the minutes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the town manager report. Paul? Hmm. What? Are, let's see. Town manager report. So, um, I was not at the council meeting on Monday, so Sean was, and, and so is Austin, Alex, I believe. So I will defer to someone who was actually there to report on that. That's the most town, recent. Town council debated um, entering into a um, an addendum to our memorandum of understanding between the library and the town, which would carry uh, this project forward through uh, construction bids. Uh, it was a lively debate, and the town council voted eight in favor, five opposed. I think that's accurate. Did I get it right? Yep. So that's the status of where we are right now, is putting, putting that proposal together. Great. Great, great, great. The proposal being this memorandum of understanding. The MO, yeah, memorandum. Good. To totally, totally fabulous. And Paul, do you want to say anything on the agenda? It says additional state funding initiative update. Do you want to say anything about that? So there is, uh, there are people advocating at uh, multiple levels with our state legislators to try to advocate um, for additional funding or adjustments in the Mass Board of Library Commissioners commitment to their building program. Um, and I think that's there are about 12, I think Sharon has this information, about 12 communities who are in the exact same boat as we are. I just actually got off the phone with one town manager in another community, same situation um, where their, their library project has increased significantly in cost. Um, and so seeking relief at the state level seems very logical, uh, but the state has a number of things in play that they're trying to manage as well. Um, so. We are hopeful, but uh, and and we'll continue to advocate at the state level. And there's you know the council. There's different people involved with that effort. Right. Thank you, Sharon. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no. I just I encourage you all to write letters. Um, I 
today, tonight, tomorrow uh, would, be, would be ideal. I think it makes a difference. Um, and, and these folks, especially on ways and means, want to hear from you. Thank you. And those letters are, uh, I mean, they're right, Paul, this is a statewide problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, there's a kind of funding crisis that's pre precipitated by things beyond the control of any of these of, of any of these libraries and these libraries are in various states so some are like us where you know it's signed sealed and delivered um others have right preliminary awards others are expecting an award but everybody is in the same boat and in fact the cost escalations in other towns percentage wise are even great in some mm -hmm. other towns right are even greater than ours mm -hmm. Sharon, what is the greatest, what is the one, I mean, you don't have to name the town, but like, what is the highest percentage? There's increase? one that's a 60% increase. 60% increase. So, okay. Any questions about either the um, the town council uh, report or uh, this uh, report about uh, initiatives at the, at the state level? Those initiatives at the state level are, you know, kind of running in parallel, if you will, to uh, the ongoing fundraising effort that is being carried out by the uh, Friends of the Library Capital Campaign. Okay. All right, Paul, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Sean, review and approval of invoices, financial update. So we do have the August invoice from Collier's. Um, we have processed and, and paid all the invoices that we had from FA, FAA, so we're all set there. Um, so this is for August, similar format as the past, um, same monthly fee. And right. I would look for a motion to approve. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Thank, thank you, is there a second? A second. Any questions about paying the invoice? Sharon. Yes. George? Yes. Sean? Yes. Christine? Yes. Alex? Alex gave me thumbs up, so I think that's a yes. Paul? Yes, sorry, I couldn't get back to my unmute. That's okay, yeah. Paul? I'm a yes, too. And Austin is a yes. Thank you, Sean. Anything else on the, fi on the financial update? I think the OPM is going to share um, a few different financial updates, so I'll, I'll defer to him. Great. Okay, and any other questions for Sean? If not, let's go to uh, item five on the agenda, which is the Collier, Collier's uh, OPM report. Craig, it's nice to see you, Will. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Austin. All right, so if it pleases you, I'll share my screen. Please. So um, I think we'll start with the schedule and then uh, make our way through uh, some of those documents that um, Sean referred to, some uh, updates to the finances. So here was the project schedule um, from a couple months ago um, when we were in schematic design. Um, using the information that we've learned since then, um, talking with the design team, we've updated the schedule. Um, and as could be expected, things have um, drawn out a bit. So I'll show what that looks like now. And then I've got both so we can sort of toggle back and forth, but let's see here. So we're here we are at the red line. This is a couple of days ago, um, September, you know, middle of September. What we've done is we were poised to enter the design development phase. I'll zoom in a little bit. Yep. The, the design team, uh, so a couple things have uh, extended the duration of the design development. And then of course it's, it's slid um, forward in time a, a couple months as well. So um, the, this block here, these two months here, this is time the design uh, team has said that they need uh, in order to update the plans, um, sort of uh, bring them up to speed so that all the modifications and um, comments um, that, that they've received can be incorporated. So that's sort of like the first step. So once the town gives them the go ahead to move into design development, that's like the first thing they're gonna tackle. Um, it, they, they said eight weeks, they are confident that they can get everything done and caught up in that time. If they can reduce that, they will. So if they can do seven weeks, six weeks, whatever, that's their goal. Um, but they wanted to be conservative in this estimate. So 
We plugged in two months. Here's the normal uh, design development portion. And then I attacked on an extra month at the end um, because we know we're so tight on um, the cost and the cost is such an important thing. And we're going to do another round, I'm sure, of looking, taking a hard look at you know, value management items. Um, I added some extra time in there. So that would be time. Um, and if we don't need it, great. But that would be time that um, the cost estimators can give us some prices for things that we have ideas about. Um, this, this board and the community can you know, consider them, ask questions back and forth. So um, added that in there. Um, that gets us um, into construction documents, the next major phase, um, say the latter portion of spring in 2023. That phase hasn't changed. Actually, um, I tightened it up a little bit looking at our detailed um, timeline. The cost estimate for construction documents doesn't happen at the end. It happens at the 75% point. And so um, that, you know, we don't need to do a similar thing where we tack anything on at the end. That puts us um, with having the construction documents starting the bid process of fall, um, sort of mid to late fall next year, let's say November 1st, we would go into bid. Um, three months for you know, bidding to get the bids, you know, put the information out there on the street, get the um, bids back, begin evaluating them, and for this um, committee to um, decide which contract they'd like to go with. Um, and at that point, up here in the top row, I'm tracking um, the MBLC disbursements. So at that point, we'll be eligible for disbursement number two. So that would be, um, say, end of January 2024. Construction phase did not change. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be eligible for the third disbursement. Mm -hmm. I've got here in July. That would normally be here at the point where we got a building permit. But because we're getting number two in, say, February, that one's got a bump to the next fiscal year. So um, fiscal year starts in July. So that'll be number three. Construction goes all the way through uh, to the end of summer, or you know, let's say two-thirds of the way through summer of 2025. Uh, that's when we anticipate we'll, we would, the contract would reach substantial completion and you, you, the town would get their certificate of occupancy from the building inspector and you'd be allowed to move in your materials, your furnishings and equipment, either um, you know, reused or new. So we've got that time to get everything set up. Um, occupancy is this big star here in fall, uh, let's say October of 2025. Um, and that uh, marks also the fourth disbursement. Um, the fifth disbursement would have to, from MBLC would have to wait till the next fiscal year. So we've got that coming in uh, the summer, as soon as it's eligible, the summer of 2026. So the disbursements, um, that timeline has changed significantly. Um, similarly, the uh, temporary occupancy line down here has kind of stretched out to match, um, you know, when, when you'd get the space, when the space would be ready um, to start getting inhabited, used, and then moved out of. And so those, Durations didn't change, it just kind of slid down. What I did is I took this public input and stretched that out. So that's our new schedule. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Great. Questions about the schedule, Sean? Craig or, or maybe Sharon knows, is there any precedent for MBLC? I know their, their rule is one payment per year, but is there any precedent for them making more than one payment per year if they have the funds? Um, you know, I, if, if so, for whatever reason they don't make a payment to one other library and they have the extra funds, would they consider it? it uh, I'd love to say yes, I'm sure they would, uh, but they tend to really stick to their rules because there are so many other libraries involved. So I'm guessing the answer is no, but yeah, I'm not sure. Thank you. Craig, do you, do you have any other um, information on that? I, I do not, but I'd be glad to ask MBLC. Um, and sort of walk them through this timeline and see if this is in fact um, what they would uh, plan on. So I'll, I'll put that on my to-do list. Great, and you should be in touch with the with Sharon um, as you reach out to MBLC. Will do. Okay, any other questions about the schedule? So Craig, my just question is, given that things have slid through 
you know, for a variety of reasons. Uh, is this schedule sufficiently ambitious? Um, yes, I think so. Um, so the, there's no, no, nowhere along the line that we, we, you, you can anticipate uh, that we, we can kind of pick up time. There are some small opportunities to pick up, you know, a couple of weeks here and there, but nothing that would um, so the, significantly the change, thing. yeah, the, the layout. Okay. Any other questions about the schedule? All right, I see none. So, Craig, thank you for that. Certainly. All right. So, next item I wanted to go over. Let's see, page twelve. Okay. Um, so, something that we've been talking about was uh, this. You know, the budget. Uh, so, this is the latest and greatest. Um, this still is a three kind of a low, medium, and a high estimate because there are still some uh, pretty big unknowns. But um, looking, I think for, for our purposes tonight, we'll look most at the mid here. Um, one thing that we talked about last month, I'm sorry, at the last meeting was this category here, the um, ff and &E budget. So uh, previously, this was uh, two million five hundred sixteen thousand, and the question is: All right, what is you know? Can we take some money out of that? All right. So if we take a million dollars out, um, what does that look like? Um, and so I had mentioned that um, you know reuse of existing furniture is one way you can save some money there or reduce costs there. Um, but Austin, I believe you were looking for some more definition. And so um, we do not have the cost estimate, uh, the, the furniture and equipment designer on board yet. Just, just uh, Craig, I just want to make sure of you, the, the budgets that you were showing us, the, the 43, 46, 49, those, those have not changed, right? So that they, Correct. they, are, they do not include uh, value management uh, savings. Is that right? This, what, thank you for, that's a great question and uh, sorry for not bringing it up. So what these numbers represent is incorporating all those value management I ideas that were approved last at the last meeting. Okay. So those have been rolled in with one exception and that is the, um, the yeah, slate that, roof. Uh -huh. So I still have only heard for, back from one of the cost estimators and his information, although good, he admitted was uh, a couple years old. And so I was hoping to get some, uh, a second opinion uh, before we kind of uh, start counting on those savings. Uh, but if that one cost estimate fantasy is correct, it, they are um, switching from real slate to synthetic slate is a significant um, cost reduction. I think he threw out the number of uh, 250,000, something like that. Like it was significant. So that will help certainly. Um, these numbers that we're also looking at do include that, you know, not yet approved, but sort of conceptualized million dollar reduction in, in furnishings and equipment. They which do or do not? Does, yes, do. it does. Okay. So, and to help understand what that um, entails, right. these are the old plans or the, the previous plans. So right there, we know that this is just a, a diagram Yep. Um, what what we did without having the benefit of um, the furniture and equipment, either designer or vendor on board, is we look Collier's looked at some recent projects we've done. What the furnishings cost, um, kind of like middle of the road, so not, you know, you know, lower basement, uh, cheap stuff, but also not really high end stuff, but you know, solid, dependable things, uh, products, and. We've got three categories here. I'm sorry, I'll flash back to this. We've got three categories that we've broken the furnishings down into loose furnishings, and that's you know chairs, tables, um, office furnishings, library shelving, which of course is necessary and is a specialty. And then this category E, AV equipment and book sorter for 440,000. The design team very helpfully solicited some information from a, um, a book sorter manufacturer 
And they estimate it was somewhere around 300,000, just below $300,000 for the piece of equipment or the pieces of equipment that we'd be looking to install here at the Jones Library. And so then we have about 140,000 left over for AV equipment. Um, so I think that um, that's a good sort of breakdown. Now back to this diagram. So we use some colors here. I'll just quickly, I'll walk you through it all, but we use different colors to help visualize what we're talking about. The loose furnishings, those chairs, um, tables, they have this blue box around them. Um, library shelves are all in green. And then the book sorter is just this purple area here. So under this $1.5 million budget, we would get at the recommendation of the design team, they said, no, 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 we can't reduce any costs on the shelving. You want all new shelving. That's something that's very important to having a successful kind of furniture and equipment package. So with that assumption, it actually checks out with our information, um, you know, library shelves, uh, we counted up just over 700 units, $600 a unit is something that we saw on another uh, recent project. Um, so that comes in uh, 400, let's say $440,000. So um, within that budget just barely, but within that budget. So that number of 440,000 for the bookshelves so far is checking out. And that allows you to have all new bookshelves. Um, the book sorter I mentioned 300,000 that fits within that um, $550,000 line item. So now it's just the loose furniture that I'll walk you through. And that is uh, something that you guys may have already as a resource is some furniture that's uh, hopefully in serviceable condition. Um, what I've done here is shown kind of an a la carte, you know, what things cost so that we can visualize, all right, anything in a blue box, yep. I've counted up and estimated how much it would be. So if we say, all right, we want all, you know, we don't have chairs, but you know, we want all, or we want all new chairs for our new large meeting room, that's going to be somewhere between 23 and $31,000, our okay. estimate. If you say, okay, well, we also need all new office furniture. This is how many offices I counted, level one, five, level two, four, level three, seven, total of 16 offices, um, 3,000 or 3,600 to 5,000 to furnish a typical office. So if you do all new office furnishings for those offices, we're somewhere between 58 and 80,000. So you can kind of get a feel for, all right, if we're talking about offices, that's how much we're talking about. So any everything else on this lower floor if it's available, of course, we'd have to, you know, um, uh, someone would have to do a, um, an analysis of what's available in the current library that can be used. Yep. So this is just kind of an example or a sample. Yep. So everything else would be reuse. Yep. Second floor or second level, which is main level. I thought maybe this is an area where more new furniture would have sort of the biggest impact, biggest positive impact. So um, you know, looking at the circulation areas, you know, average prices for the I, for this, I did computers and um, furnishings, somewhere around seventeen thousand dollars to do the cafe space with this, you know, the former layout um, and this uh, boutique wall display. I, I assume that was going to be a eight or ten thousand dollar item. Um, the chairs and tables somewhere between thirty five and fifty thousand chairs and tables back here between 30 and 40,000 chairs and tables in the young adult section 40 and 50,000 um, similar thing up on the third level new chairs and tables for these rooms but not necessarily these rooms hopefully, hopefully there's things that can be reused um, and so what so you can kind of get a feel for all right we're doing about like half new furniture half um, existing furniture and what that yields is this little table here so uh, of the loose furnishings, this was our budget, you know, five hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. What I've shown in those blue boxes, if you if you bought all that new, that'd be approximately three hundred thousand dollars. That means we've got two hundred thousand left over for grounds and custodial equipment, special collections, uh, specifically the high density storage. You know, that's something that I didn't have a price for, but uh, is going to be necessary. Um, this does not include phones. Um, 
I did include um, the computers in anywhere I put the blue box, new computer, but obviously there are other places where we are showing computers. Um, so again, big disclaimer, this isn't our um, area of expertise, but uh, in sort of our, this is our best attempt at helping uh, this committee understand what that million dollar reduction would kind of look like. Are there any questions? Thank you, Craig. Uh, I've got two hands up so far, Sean and Sharon. Sean first. Yeah, I've just I've got a few questions. Um, so like uh, bathroom fixtures and things like that, that comes out of a separate budget, not this one, right? Very good question. You're correct. So the uh, fixtures, furnishings, and equipment is a little bit of a misleading term. Toilet fixtures, light fixtures, that would all be part of the base uh, building cost. And so that would be the plumbing line item and the, okay. uh, and the electri electrical line item. Okay. And Great likewise, question. like um, like the the wires and conduits that are in the walls and ceilings for technology and things like that, is that part of the electrical or the, the general contractor's budget? Yes. So we would have that built into that. Um, uh, I forget now what the the cost estimate was, but that's the cost estimators included those. It's within that. Okay. Um, and then s signage for a building like this, I don't have a good sense of like what, I imagine a new building is going to need quite a bit of signage on the walls and um, uh, would that come out of this budget? Um, typically, yes, it does. Um, it would be something that is sort of a, a separate line item. I can't recall if we have a specific line item for signage in our in the budget, but yes, that's a very good point. So that would that would be another package of scope that would have to fit into this two hundred nineteen thousand uh, sort of leftover. Okay, and then the last one was just um, if if there is going to be any purchase of new laptops, computers, um, projection equipment, anything like that, that would come out of there too. I know there's some of that's already there's money for separately, but if there's any additional because of the new, the new area that would come out of this area, the section of the budget. So it, it's, so we have, um, let's say 140,000. If in the there, book's okay. order is in fact 300,000, we'd have 140 left over okay. for AV. Yeah. Okay, no, that's helpful. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Sean. Oh, Sharon? Yeah, so I just wanted to know if now is a time for me to ask, so George, uh, Hicks Richards and and Matt Burby are uh, for an inventory of what furniture exactly could be reused and how many computers that we can reuse. Who, who are you asking that question to, Craig? I, I think Craig is now the time, or should I wait? Um, I would say more information is better. I know that's uh, that's a that's a big undertaking. Um, to to do so, I don't want to do it too lightly. But if the if the committee is seriously considering this, you know, million dollar uh, reduction, then yes, I, that is that would be very valuable information. Thank you, uh, Christine. Yeah, my question's about the books order um, and that amount that's in there, Craig. Was yeah. that from? A specific RFID or like from another library? How like is it a rigorous one, a minor one? Where did that fit? So that so the the system it was a um, what is it called? Um, Biblioteca, I believe, is the manufacturer, and that would be the cost for the equipment that would go in um, the collection area, and um, so it's like a series of rollers and sorters and uh, lifts. So that's what that $300,000 would buy you. It would not buy you necessarily the RFID. Um, the, the design team pointed that out that that, that 300,000 did not include the RFID package. Um, so it's just the book sort And does that include um, installation and like setting it up? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sharon? Yeah, I just wanted to say, so we we met with, the, the two companies are Biblioteca and TechLogic. They're both on the state's uh, bid contract. Um, and, and so, and, and those are the two norms across the state of Massachusetts. Biblioteca t seems to be the better, um, uh, the better option. And so 
That being said, both companies have been given our designs. In fact, Biblioteca reached out to Feingold Alexander on their own. I think they're, they've worked on other library projects uh, together before. So basically what they, what they do is they have our specs and they'll be able to design a system and get us exact price costs. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sharon. Alex. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, clarify. I know that, so um, there was a question about laptops and AV equipment, um, but I, and there have been conversations about, you know, will we go back to the Joint Capital Planning Committee for these things? And I guess I want to clarify and make sure my understanding is correct. So in my time on the Joint Capital Planning Committee, as a library, the usage on our computers is hard, high, and frequent. And so getting all new equipment on day one doesn't mean that we won't go back to the joint capital planning. We have a cycle, like everybody has a cycle. The schools have a cycle, the library has a cycle for their tech equipment. And I guess the gift of this is we skip a cycle in essence, but then we would still go back to some cycle. So, and I guess I just wanna be clear that that's still the case. I think in terms of the planning we do on the capital improvement program, we would still expect there to be a replacement schedule for, for technology, yeah. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Sharon? That's exactly what I wanted to say that, yes, hopefully that was understood, but I'm glad it was clarified. Thank you. So we asked Craig, and he's done a great job, we asked Craig to bring us some things so that we could uh, come to some understanding about whether or not we want to endorse the reduction in the ff and &E budget for this project uh, down to what I think he showed on the diagram was about 1.5 million. That's right. Uh, and this was this is part of our value value engineering value management activity. Uh, we've endorsed a variety of reductions in the, the budget for the project. The question is whether or not we are ready to endorse this one. Uh, given the understanding that Craig has uh, said, this is not the final word on this. This is to give us a rough idea of what it might um, entail. So are we ready to uh, express our collective view about the uh, proposed million dollar savings in the F, F, and E. Okay, if we are, then someone should make a motion to accept the reduction as described by uh, Craig in the pr presentation that we've just had. Can I ask a question first? I'm sorry, I've lost my ability to raise my hand. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, can, since this is FF and E, we're not going to have need this stuff in place for a couple more years. Well, with the exception of the the sorter, can, can we hold off on making this decision? Uh, go so going back to the state initiative for additional funding. Um, I, I'm feeling very optimistic about it, and that could um, that could make these cuts premature. So I take it that if we say we want to make this cut, that helps us have a sense of what the budget would be. Um, I take it that if new funds become available from the state, that this committee uh, might have a conversation again about various items. Some of it might be too late to change. But uh, it's your, your, your pleasure. Do you want to speak now about this or you want to wait? Alex? So I guess my thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, but I feel like what I heard last time was we're going to hire a designer, a designer plans the whole thing. And then if we get more money later, we're not going back to that designer again. So I guess my question is, is it better to have somebody design the whole thing, assuming the ARPA funds and the fundraising come through and we have our best case scenario. And then, okay, don't we make our own decisions about, you know, the changes and the cuts versus getting sort of a watered down version and then we wind up with more money, but we don't have the bigger plan. So I think my preference would be to hold this as something we can cut later if if it makes sense logic. Like for me, it makes sense to have somebody plan the whole thing and then cut, but that's my thought. Greg. That's a, a great point, um, Alex. And um, I think a very good strategy. Um, 
you have the you know we we we're going to have this designer have them design sort of the best case scenario the best library with all new furniture and then like you said we say all right now we've got that cost let's decide all right this table instead of being new we can we've got one that we can use these chairs instead of being new we've got those we can use and kind of take it um from that direction but then um also maybe in the back of the mind or with that inventory of existing furniture sort of keeping an eye on that like all right um we also sort of know the stock that we're starting with or that could be available if we want to go that route if we have to go that route so i think that's a what alex proposed is a great strategy so I just want to say, I don't know, um, that makes sense to me, but I think it would be really good to be able to say what we think the budget of this project is going to be. And if we are planning to make a million dollar cut in the ff &E, I think we ought to say that that's what we're planning to do, um, as opposed to not say that that's what we're planning to do and float a budget figure that's higher than we actually are planning to, to, to use. So long as it's understood, uh, but I'm not wedded to this position, but so long as understood that uh, because F F and E gets done later on, we might want to we might want to rethink that later on. That's the only reason I can think about for why we might want to say now what our disposition is. But Craig, oh, I'm sorry, Craig. Sean, Sean was Sean. Well, it. it's related to what you said, Austin, and and I think one reason I I sort of agree with the way you're going is the number we shared with the council and that we put into the. The last presentation was the number that included that million dollar reduction in ff and &E. so if we were not going to do that we would want to let them know that the the midpoint is actually a million dollars higher um because that was what was in the last budget that was sent out craig uh, thanks austin so um geez i forgot what i was gonna say um so uh, one Con, one way to sort of manage costs is uh, the concept of uh, tiered reduction. And so you can have, um, say, a, a price or a plan for all new furniture, but then have, all right, if that doesn't, if, if we're able to, if we need to cut it um, by a million dollars, that's a tier. Um, and that you could say, actually, maybe in the opposite, sorry, I'm thinking out loud, so it's a little, scram I'm a little scrambled, but you could do um, almost a mindset of, all right, well, here's our reduced budget and we're, we're planning for if more money is available, then we would go, um, these are the things that we'd like to, to add. So it's almost like um, in parallel having two options available or more. But I think for what we're talking about, it would just be two that $1.5 million. And then, you know, if you, if you get more money, the 2.5 million. Christine. Yeah, I get how that 2.5 is kind of like an arbitrary number. It was like a holding number. So just Craig, if you could better explain a little. So we're looking at, you described what we could have for 1.5. And then what all I was seeing that's really cutting is like half the furniture or something that would be reused. But no way is that $1 million. Like, does it have to be 1.5 or... 2.5 or could it be two? Like what What else besides furniture is in this million dollars that's getting cut, if it got cut? So um, I took that full million out of loose furnishings, which are the tables and chairs and office furniture. But um, yes, you could do something like um, delay the purchase of the books order. Sorry, Sharon. Um, as a strategy, get more furniture, and then as money became available um, down the road, purchase the books order. You can do things like that. But as an exercise, I just took it all out of the loose furnishings. Uh, Does Anika, that answer the question? Uh, hold on one second, Anika. Sorry, Christine. So I'm still like, there's no way that that a million dollars is getting cut that's just loose furniture. Like what else is it like, is it computers? Is it AV? Like what else? Because it just seems like a million dollars of furniture is ridiculous. Um, I think once we have the furniture uh, designer on board, they could give us a price for all new furnishings. 
and then we can see more accurately what does it mean to take a million dollars out. Um, but yeah, furnishings are a big expense, and so yes, you 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 would. If you were to get all new furnishings, it's going to be at least a million dollars more than that $1.5 million um, item, in my estimation. Anika. So I had a question. I heard when I, when Craig, you, when you said, or I saw rather the cringe from Sharon when Craig said about delaying with the uh, book sorter. So I wanted to ask about that. And um, second, I just wanted to share, I don't know that this would... Um, work here, but in terms of refurbishing, um, I was just reading and I'll try to pull up the article. It was actually about a museum that did something similar and within like kids and teens room and where it applied, um, there was actually a community buy-in of like painting um, some of the furniture. So it was just like, it, it was, you know, it was suited and um, it did actually help um, cut costs. But with that, I wanted to understand the cringe from the bookstore. <laughs> I, I hope I didn't cringe. I think I giggled um, just because I, you know, I knew I knew early on that would be it. So my only concern about the book sorter is is staffing. If that machine is not in place, then I'm gonna need several more staff members. Um, it's any li library that you speak to that that has one of these book sorters talks about the amount of time that's being saved. Um, it, it, and a library uh, that the size of Amherst uh, that, that does the amount of circulation that Amherst does, it's a book sorter is, is a very common thing. So, so that's my only concern. Um, I got Alex next. Actually, if George hasn't spoken yet, so I'm happy to wait if that makes sense. Where I can go. <laughs> I was gonna. Do, I defer to you, Alex. Okay, I was just gonna make a, a comment. So um, the original budget submitted to the MBLC for loose furnishings was two million dollars, um, with library shelving at five hundred thousand and audio AV books at four hundred thousand. And the signage that uh, <clears throat> Sean was asking about, telecommunications equipment, data equipment, was all included in that furnishings number, the loose furnishings number. And so when we made the first cut back before the project was approved, um, we had reduced the number by, I think it was like $400,000 because the original number was based on all new furnishings, all new stacks. And then it's also an escalated number. So these are escalated numbers for the purchase of these things. Um, and so I guess if that gives Christine some perspective on her, so it's not just loose furniture in there, it also includes the signage, it also includes, right. so those are all categories together. Thank you, Alex. George? Um, so the, 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 the current building, as a lot of us know, is a mishmash of uh, vintage furniture, used furniture, some modern furniture. Um, I do feel though that cutting the ff and &E by by a million dollars is doable because a lot of the furniture that we have that would be serviceable and repurposed are is furniture say from the meeting rooms like for instance we have a hundred herman miller stacking chairs that were that are less than 10 years old yep. um that's a big chunk of money right there uh we have a lot of our newer furnishings are still in very good shape however a lot of the older furniture is not ADA compliant and wouldn't be able to be repurposed. Um, most of the office furnishings are hand-me-down items, mm -hmm. older technology that wasn't made to be used with computers. And we've, over the years, we've just adapted to it. So I would see that a good chunk of the furnishings that would be out in the public use could likely be repurposed, but we definitely would need new furnishings in a lot of areas like offices, um, practical areas where the size is going to be smaller than what they may have now. Like for instance, tech services has enormous tables that probably won't fit into their new space. Uh, there's built-ins that aren't going to exist anymore, things like that. But I do feel, just thinking through my head, I do feel confident that cutting a million dollars out of that is not going to uh, be too damaging. 
Craig. Thank you. Thank you, George. Christine. Um, so building on that, and Craig, I know this isn't your expertise, but maybe you've seen other examples of this. What is the possibility of buying used furniture? Like, especially for the offices and that kind of thing. Um, could that be a savings? And is that done sometimes? Um, yes. Um, so you, there are some used furniture vendors and there it does come at a savings. So you could take your money and kind of stretch it. Um, but um, a, a used piece of office equipment, uh, office furniture, maybe say 70% the cost of a, a brand new piece. So yes, there is some savings, but it's not it's not um, so deep that you'd be able to furnish the entire you know building. Right, George. Yeah, I'll, I'm just gonna what Craig said because we a lot of our recent furniture purchases have been from a company in West Springfield that specializes in used office furniture. And while there is a cost savings, it's not that much over a new piece of furniture. Right. Okay, so the question before us is, uh, shall we vote now on the proposed FF&E um, change? And with the understanding, uh, I, I take it that uh, when the council voted to endorse moving forward with the memorandum of understanding, the I don't know this, the council would have understood that costs are gonna, might go up, they might go down. So um, I may, maybe Anika would say whether or not the council, when it voted, was voting. Th this is this is the budget we're voting on, and the reason why I say that is because we didn't we don't have a budget, right? We have a low estimate, a medium estimate, and a high estimate. So uh, while I'm in favor of voting now to to give a sense of what the budget is. Uh, my own view is that we're not required to do it because of something that the council might have thought when it voted. But again, I defer to Anika. I mean, a lot of movement on the screen, Anika. Mm -hmm. um, to my understanding, there was, you know, it was made clear that there was talk about an additional million dollar cut. All right, so uh, um, yeah, Christine. Um, so Sharon, you spoke at the beginning of this that you kind of wanted to wait. Do you, after our discussion, are you still feeling that way or are you wobbling? Yeah, no, I'm happy to to cut out the 1 million. I, I was just asking if it, it could happen later, but I completely understand um, optics, politics of let, <laughs> let's get to a number. Sure. So just just for the sake of, of our conversation, if someone would like us to vote to accept this million dollar cut, could they make a motion which could then be seconded and then we can continue the conversation? Sean, you want to make a motion? Yeah, I move to reduce the FF&E budget by $1 million as Thank shown you. on the uh, screen before. Terrific. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Thank. Okay, that's very helpful. So, Anika, your hand is still up. Do you have more? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I've got <laughs> Alex and then Sean. So, I'm I'm happy to vote um, in favor of the million dollar reduction, but I really, really want to make sure that there still exists an opportunity because, for, I mean, to me, just getting the full budget number from a just purely from a design perspective. I, I just I fear we do a million dollar cut and then something comes back from the legislature and then we have to go back again and that just builds up costs again. So I'm happy to make the cut that sends the signal this is the budget, but when we sit down with the furniture designers, I, I want there to be a different budget that we can then cut the million out if we need to, if that makes any sense. Because I, I, I fear it's gonna be more expensive in the end if we wind up having the money than I'm happy to take a red pen with Sharon and George and like cut uh, out what we need to. The budget, but. the budget is not like the Ten Commandments, right? I mean, if, if we need to make some changes in the budget, and I take it that there, there's some items that are going to be fungible. I mean, we're going to save here and put some money there. 
so it's a it's a i think i think they would say in um um, maybe the Supreme Court would say it's a target. It's not a quota. I mean, it's it's this is this is what our operating budget would would be. With the understanding, as long as, that, as long as the direction to the designer is to give us a plan for X dollars, I'm fine moving it around and then cutting it later. That's my only. I just I don't want to keep going back and spending additional funds because we keep you know doing this, and it's just going to be easier to cut. Then it's going to be to add, and whatever that looks like, that's just what I'm asking for. Craig, do you understand what you was just being asked? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And so, and is it is is it possible to vote now for the million dollar cut and still accommodates Alex's desire? I believe so. I and that's something I'll have to ask the the design team, uh, but I believe that would be reasonable. Okay, Paul. Yeah, just to, to be clear with Craig that this this cut is included in the number that was presented to the town council on Monday, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's I think we should be in alignment with what was presented to the town council on Monday. Which so it means I support Sean's motion. Okay. Is there any other discussion of this motion? uh see no hands are we ready to vote sharon so you vote yes you're voting to endorse the million dollar cut yes george yes sean yes christine yes paul yes anika yes alex yes and austin votes yes thank you very thank you very much craig anything else on the value management list uh, nope, not at this time. So I want to raise a question about, and it follows logically from Paul's intervention. Uh, and I'm not in a position where I can really advocate this because I voted no and didn't prevail. So one thing that has stuck with me is this sawtooth roof change. And it was referenced a couple of times in the council. and. Uh, I've done a little um, little testing of sawtooth roof designs. The Amherst College Science Center has one. And I went into the Science Center, which, you know, it's not where I usually go. And I thought it made a big difference in the design of that building. Now that's that building. So I'm not able to, I'm not able to say we should reconsider because I voted against it. But I did want to just raise this question about, so I think what we've done so far is we've managed to do value engineering that preserved the essential elements of the design of the library and the core functions. And I just worry that the sawtooth, sawtooth roof cut I mean, I wish the architects had been here, is a real change uh, in, the, in, the design, in the design of the library. Sean? Craig, is the sawtooth, sawtooth roof, is, is that too big of a uh, adjustment to be considered as an alternate? I would say yes. Okay. So if no one else wants to talk about the sawtooth roof design then it's done because i again i voted no so i i can't introduce a motion to reconsider for example and i don't know whether anybody's interested in that christine and then sharon um i just wanted to ask so craig as you know we're still sort of moving through sd and sort of starting dd and the designers are working hard when can we expect that they're going to come back and give us some idea of what the design is now going to look like. Because I think when is a new rendering coming, you know, like that will be helpful. Because I also wonder, is the design subcommittee, you know, when is, is that going to come to us or here? Uh, great question. Um, so at present, the design is not being advanced. Um, 
we're sort of in between schematic design and design development. And so once we start design development, I would say, I would guess that um, within the first couple of weeks, certainly within the first two months or so, the design team would be able to start showing um, what the new um, building would look like. Maybe not with those fully um, rendered perspectives that they that they have done by an outside company, but um, at least some rough sketches and some rough imagery. So right now we're in a holding pattern. Once we give them the go ahead, I would say uh, you know a couple couple months. Uh, yeah, a couple weeks to a couple months. Uh, okay, Christine, is it question answered? No, it's just a follow up. So could we request a rendering? I just I also see the outreach community is gonna really want that kind of thing. I don't know, Alex, you tell me, because we're gonna want to get some feedback, not just I mean, Austin, it's, you know, I think what you're bringing up, other people have that concern. And I think a picture is worth a, a lot. And I know they go to another company, but could we have that sooner rather than later? I would, I would, I would think not. So they don't know, they haven't developed whatever concept they're going to propose next. If they had, if they developed it, you know, yeah, we could probably get a, a rendering of it, but because they don't need the design team, you know, as of today, they don't even know um, what that next iteration is going to look like. Yeah. And I, I meant, you know, a couple months from now, like as we are rolling, I didn't mean like right now or two weeks from now but if if that could be part of their process is they hammer it out with us and then kind of roll it out to us which is more like six to eight weeks from now so right right yes i i think that would be a reasonable request to get right. some 3d imagery as soon as possible so that everyone understands what what the new design looks like and every everybody's going to understand whatever we ask the designer to do that they are not now planning to do increases the cost so I don't think, I mean, I think we need to think very care, carefully about, well, show us this, um, unless it's really, you know, kind of essential, but Sharon and then Alex. Yeah, so, um, so, so here's the problem. Um, so remember back when Paul basically, when we first started meeting 10 years ago, uh, you know, he talked about wanting to build a, a a library, design a library that not only is going to stand the test of time, but it's going to be something beautiful that, you know, that Amherst can brag about. Um, that sawtooth roof absolutely contributes to that look and that feel and that wow factor. Um, I think losing it is, is heartbreaking um, for this building that is so important to downtown Amherst. That being said, so we also just had this discussion about the town council vote and is it the Bible or is it not the Bible? Um, because the, I know that the architects, it hurt them to cut the sawtooth roof. You know, they want a big, they want to build beautiful buildings. And, and that was in, an integral part of, of their design from day one. But if, but if that's going to cost about the same amount of money as the sorter, I really need the sorter from the functionality and the staffing uh, side of, of the building. And, and then fast forward to this whole ARPA additional state funding um, possibility. This is a really hard decision to make right now without being able to screw with the bottom line. Uh, Alex and then Anika, Alex. So it was my emotion, my emotion, it was my motion. So I'm, ha we're already talking about it. So I'm happy to put a motion on the floor. So uh, what I would propose, and I'm doing this on the fly, so it's not gonna be well-crafted, I apologize, Angela. But what I'm thinking is that we, I make a motion to move the flat roof back into the not plausible in exchange for the, uh, modify the design. It was item 8.1, modify design of sawtooth roof light monitors to reduce costs. And if someone will second that, I'll speak to why I'm suggesting that. Point of order. 
Oh. I, I think, don't you need to re vote to reconsider the original motion? I think that I think that's the I think that's the first order of business. The, the okay. committee has made a decision. You would have to vote to reconsider because you voted in the affirmative. Yep. So you can vote, and then that if that motion carries, then you can make the the motion that you'd like to make. Sweet. Whatever Paul just said, I do that. That's my motion. So your motion would be to reconsider, reconsider the, pre the motion the on the sawtooth tooth roof. roof. Yeah. Yes. Is there a second to the motion to reconsider? Second. Okay, now there's a discussion of the motion to reconsider. And the discussion of the motion to reconsider is substantive. It's not just procedural. In other words, this is about, do you really wanna go back and say, let's go back to the sawtooth roof with its budgetary implications? Uh, Anika, were you- Can I speak to my motion? Recognized before? <laughs> Sorry, Alex. So I, my my thought process was this, um, you know, I like the the half million dollar cut, but the cost of the slate roof, if it is around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, was not part of the number that was considered by the town council. Correct. So if we put the five hundred back into the not plausible, we do the two fifty. We do the modify the sawtooth, which is a two fifty reduction, and we get another two fifty from the slate. That keeps our number the same. So that was my thinking. If that if that makes a happiness ground for everybody, that's what my thinking was, and I just throw it out there for people to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Sean. So, sorry, I froze for a second. I think what you said is if we take the sawtooth roof out, we put in the modified the design, and we get the numbers back on the synthetic versus real slate that's sort of a wash, and we keep the number the same. Um, I So that makes sense to me. I guess I would be reluctant to vote today because we don't have the numbers yet on the on the synthetic slate, if, um, and it doesn't seem that the design team's moving forward. They're not going to start until I think October first at the soonest. Uh, and so, if we meet in a couple of weeks, I guess I would prefer to wait till we come back and we have the exit, the numbers on that to know for sure that kind of shakes out that way. And then I think it it, it is worth the discussion. Christine, you're muted. Yeah, I agree. I think we should wait. Um, we haven't even seen what it's going to look like. I know we love the way that it looked, but um, the designers are off trying to rethink about windows and the skylight. And I think after they've given it some thought, we really need to hear from them since we sent them off on this initiative. Um, I, I don't understand why we would have to reconsider this now when my other thing with the slate was there was some pushback in the beginning that historical commissions may not like that. I would hate to see just to put all on that and then that get lost. I'm thinking at this point, we have a really big number that we're trying to get down. I think we need to be considering both right now, um, redoing the, the roof without the sawtooth monitors and um, also the slate. Thank you. So the motion is the motion to reconsider. Um, and then if there's a motion to reconsider, right, Paul, then there's the motion on the substance, right, which Alex would then make. Is that what you were suggesting, Paul? Yeah, I'm just looking up Robert Schultz's orders as we speak. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Okay. And I, and I don't know if we had an, did we have an individual vote on this or was it a package vote? I don't know if that matters, but I can't remember if we voted individually on this one reduction or if it was a package of reductions. Well, we, if, if there is a motion to reconsider, right, presumably it's to what Alex just said, what she wants to do is she wants to move it from one column to, an, to another. And um, I don't know, Angie, you tell me what was the was the vote Was the vote um, individual. I don't think it was right. I think at the end of the day, we voted on the package. My my recollection is that you voted on the package, but it is in that batch of minutes that we just approved. <laughs> So I think what we really want to do right now is before we get tied into the Gordian knot of Robert's rules, which is always helpful, is I think we want to talk about whether or not we, whether this is plausible for, for us. Now, what Christine proposed is we wait and we see they do all this design work. Uh, but then, of course, if we want them to stick with the sword tooth roof, we will have invested time and money for them to design something. So the 
question is whether or not you want to go forward and say to design this, this, this other thing, or whether or not you want to reconsider um, and say to them, well, no, we don't want you to put in all this time and money in designing a flat roof and other skylights because we're, we're having second thoughts. So that's, I'm just trying to get a read about, a, re, a read about that. Alex? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think Sean's idea is a good one about waiting, but again, that would mean that we would need to schedule a meeting because October, right? October 1st is the date, which is next week. So I'm happy to with draw my motion if people are able to meet again and Craig thinks that we'll have the cost estimator and then we want I mean that's I'm happy to have that conversation that makes sense to me but great um Craig do you think when do you think we're gonna we're gonna find out about slate and um I don't know but I would suspect that I could get a number within a week So what I'm hearing in the room, so to speak, is that there is not a lot of enthusiasm for right now saying restore the, the sawtooth roof. roof. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say, let's, let's do it now. So unless I've misunderstood, Alex, maybe the best thing to do is to just withdraw the motion. And uh, in, in a week or some other time, we can, uh, we can go back to the conversation about the sawtooth roof. Meantime, I invite you to walk through the Science Center at Amherst College and uh, and see the face of the Lord through those uh, through those skylights. So, OK, thank you for that. Craig, anything else from Colliers? Uh, nope, no. Nope. Thank you so much. Any other questions to Colliers? OK, next design subcommittee. Christine. We haven't met, we're just- We're in hanging. abeyance, as they say. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Outreach. We, we have not met either. I, I haven't known what to tell people, so we'll, we'll, be, we'll meeting again soon. <laughs> okay, there is nine, nine number seven is meeting schedule. So uh, we would, if we followed our usual right procedure uh, meet, uh, on the 6th of October, is that correct? That would be two weeks. Now, there was just talk of meeting sooner than that. Do we need to meet sooner than that? Uh, can I, yeah, can I just say, uh, Paul, I want to put you on the spot. Um, so the trustees on Tuesday, the 27th, are supposed to, in theory, discuss, approve that bridge amendment, but we haven't seen a draft. Mm -hmm. Will we? Yeah, I think you will. Yeah. Awesome. Um, then, so in theory, that could happen on the 27th. In theory, we could meet on the 29th. Well, there's a lot of theory there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we so, also need that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul. Well, we also need the estimate from from Craig. I mean. Craig, can you get it? Look, it, it um, it's probably easier, isn't it, to notice a meeting and then cancel it? You want to put in the books a meet on the 29th. If we don't have the estimate, we're not ready to go. We can. We can cancel it so long as we preserve the meeting on the 6th. Anika. Would this be, I'm sorry, oh, you may have just answered the question. Was this for both the 29th and the 29th of September and October 6th? So we, we I think our current schedule is we meet every other week. So the so question is preserve the 6th of October. That's our regular meeting put in a meeting on the 29th. If we have the memorandum of understanding and the trustees vote it and you know don't know where the trustees it's scheduled, but something might come up and Craig has the the information that we need, we meet on the we meet on the 29th as well. Okay. Okay, we good with that. So 29th at 4 30 in the afternoon as a as a we'll we'll notice it if we if we think we need it. And the sixth regularly scheduled meeting. And just to clarify, 4.30 as opposed to four. Uh, if we could meet at 4.30, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, thank you on the meetings. Next is correspondence. Um, I have received no correspondence. Uh, I do wanna say again, uh, how grateful I am for the care that was exercised by the Finance Committee and the Town Council, a thorough vetting of the, of the, the project. Um, I, I think it was very helpful. Uh, and I appreciate that. Topics not anticipated, other than I walked through the Science Center and I saw the sawtooth roof, so no, there are no other topics. Uh, next is public comment. Uh, we have, uh, I think, eight attendees. Again, we're grateful to uh, all for attending the meeting. Uh, does any member of the public wish to make a public comment? If, if you do, if you would raise your virtual hand. I see no virtual hand being raised. And again, thank you for the, uh, thank you to the attendees. And uh, no other business, uh, we'll, we'll adjourn. Stay well, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.